Well, in last week's video, I actually touched on the subject of managing to find time to practice for some of the major events, festivals and finals that you may have been fortunate enough to qualify for. I have managed to free up a weekend where I'm here at the fantastic and now very well established Lawford Lakes Complex where I'm here to have a bit of a recce and a bit of a practice for not one, but two major competitions that are taking place here next week. Well, I know some people are probably going to think, well, Jim, you've fished at Lawford Lakes loads and loads of times. You've had a, quite a bit of success here, to be fair, especially through winter. Why do you feel the need to come and spend a couple of days here just kind of practicing? Well, I don't really fish it through the summer months, I'll be totally honest with you. And as you can imagine, it's really dominated by um, carp fishing. Obviously, when I fish it more through the winter months, the skimmers and bream are more important. And you can actually win with, you know, targeting those species. The reason why I'm here this weekend, I've got two days here. I've come down on a Saturday morning. I'm just going to pleasure fish today. I've got Dad with me as well. So uh, he's going to be fishing a certain way and I'm going to fish a certain way as well. And um, we're just kind of going to just try a few things out that I wouldn't normally do in a match, just to see what the reaction is, see if there are any carp feeding, see what lines they're on and see what baits we can catch them on as well. We're pretty confident we know what sort of size they're going to be because this is Specy Lake and we know the average stamp is quite large. And then tomorrow, we're actually stopping down here tonight. We're staying in one of the caravans on site just for one night. Martin Edis is going to come down later on. He's fishing a match at Boston today. So fingers crossed for him at the time of filming. Hopefully he's, um, he's catching a few. So he's coming down tonight. We're staying in the caravan tonight. And then here tomorrow, there's an open match. I believe it's classed as a qualifier for the classic as well, but we're not really here for that. It's just really to come and fish a, a match on here and just see how it's fishing under match circumstances. I've been told there's about 35 to 40 anglers booked on as well. So that obviously gives it some added interest. So that's really the target aim of the weekend. I haven't brought any skimmer or bream type methods or um, tackle with me. So there aren't any ground baits, any um, cage feeders, none of that sort of stuff. It's all method feeder fishing. And you know, I'm here to spend the whole weekend targeting the carp. Well, as I said, I'm here to target carp. And as you can imagine, that means I'm gonna be using some rather specific baits today and tomorrow. Um, the first thing is pellets, very important bait on today's commercials. It's probably the, the most popular bait that a lot of these carp on all commercials see now. Lawford Lakes um, has a fishery only pellets rule in place. So obviously you've got to use their feed pellets. Today I've opted for just their micros or two mils pellets, if you want to call them that, if they refer to them as micros. Um, I'm going to be using those around a method feeder. I've got a couple of different types of method feeders and that's one of the things I want to try and find out, you know, if one's going to be better than the other. So that's one of the um, options I'm going to be trying out today, which I'll show you the kit in a moment. But like I say, I've got loads of Micros, they're for moulding around the feeder. I've got some corn, some boosted corn. You can use your own corn. This is obviously the bait tech one. So I've got a tin of corn there. Um, like I say, I can use that on the hook or I can try feeding that wherever I want to feed it in the swim. But I also understand that a lot of the carp on some of these pegs at certain times of year come close in. And that might be an option close in later on in the session. And then really, it really is that simple for today. And the other baits I've got with me are, I've got some high-vis boilies and I've got some dumbbell wafters as well, obviously, for the hook, just to try and spot any sort of a pattern about what might be better than something else. Because if we're only gonna be targeting three, four carp throughout the whole session, and if we are spending time on 10 and 15 minute casts, like you can actually be doing on venues like this, then I wanna be you know, supremely confident that I'm, I'm A, presenting the feeder in in an area or on a line that I've caught on that I'm confident in and I want to make sure that you know if I'm sitting there 10 and 15 minutes without a bite or just waiting for bites that I've got a hook bait on that I have at least recently caught some fish on. Well I get asked quite often about how I go about these kind of sessions and I know that I've been guilty of it years and years ago I know I was I know a lot of people are out there get a day off work or whatever and they just want to catch some fish and it's quite understandable you spend all week at work and you just want a day's fishing but unfortunately that's not the best way to learn how to catch fish or how to work a venue out 
Um, you've got to sacrifice that day for just trying things out. You know, you can try something and if it starts catching fish, then change it, you know, try something different then to, to see if it stops you catching those fish or see if it ups your catch rate or see if the change brings you a bigger stamp of fish. And it's just really about trying to work things out for whatever event it is that you're actually there to practice for. Today, is all about method feeder fishing and it's here to just kind of see you know are there any carp feeding can i catch any uh, and i'm assuming there are going to be some skimmers and bream there and if they are there are they going to be a nuisance when targeting the carp or are there so many of them where it might even highlight that you can build a weight of the skimmers or or you know are there just not any there i don't know that's why i'm here so today i've set up two rods Nice and simple setup. I've got two rods to fish on two different lines and I'm going to be trying different things out on each line. Okay, so I'll start on my longest range rod. I've got one that's going to be fishing that, that intends to be fishing at about 50 meters and that is going to be the XC class, 12 foot. Well, it's 3.6 meters. Um, I don't know if you'll see the graphics properly on there. Um, it's just under 12 feet long and that's obviously, I mean, as you probably see and hear the wind behind me, uh, the wind's quite strong and this is really going to be targeting that long line that you know 50 to 60 meter area where you know I'm going to start off out there just to see if there are any early fish out there um, and then obviously the other rod is for fishing shorter than that so I've got this set up with six pound cart master main line that's all I've got on there no shot leader or anything it's just not required at this sort of range fishing like this the eagle-eyed ones amongst you will notice I've got the new horizon reel the 5000 version on that rod as well and like i said that's just loaded with six pound cart master um real line no shot leader required or anything it's got a uh, i think it's a one and a half ounce tip in and that is going to be fished with some form of a method feeder an elasticated one whenever i've got the option i prefer to fish with the elasticated version which i'll show you in a moment um, because i just think you hook you know hook fish better than what you do with a, a free running method feeder but having said that do beware not every fishery allows the elasticated versions so do check fishery rules before you start fishing um, and that is really that setup i've got it clipped up at 50 meters and i'm going to start on that and then just kind of take it from there see what happens my other rod that i've got set up is a 3.3 meter which is, uh, well it's 10 foot 10 or 11 foot as I always round it up to. It's the XS Slim, beautiful little rod. Most people know I really like this rod. I like it for fishing for carp, F1s, and skimmers and bream as well. It's just a really nice all round rod. If anybody ever asks me about buying a nice all round 11 foot rod, then this is the one that I you know, strongly recommend. It, you, I use it for all sorts of different sorts of fishing. So I've got this set up to fish at about 25 to 30 meters, and I haven't got it clipped up yet. I've yet to set that up yet, but, and the eagle-eyed ones will once again notice I've got the new Horizon 4000 reel on that as well. That is, like I said, I've got a 4000 version on the 11 foot rod and the 5000 on the 12 foot rod, just because they're matched perfectly with those lens rods. This is loaded once again exactly the same with six pound cart master um, reel line, uh, no shot leader on that and that again is going to be fished with some form of a method feeder. I'm going to show you the method feeders in a moment because there are different ones, different sizes, different weights and different styles and I'm just going to see if I can try and find out which one might be best. There might not be any difference in them whatsoever but that's what I'm here to find out. Now when I talk about fishing with a method feeder, there are so many different styles and versions of method feeders out there. When you walk in the tackle shop, there are so many different brands producing them now. There are different sizes, different weights, even different shapes. The ones I've got with me today are all the Matrix versions, but what I'm going to do is just swap and change between different ones just to try and spot some sort of a pattern of if there is one that is going to be better than any of the others. You see the old drop bucket comes into play. <laughs> One thing that we've seen on so many fisheries, and uh, certainly at this time of year, is how low they are as regards the water level. I've sat here just to show you how low down it is. There's a match at Boston Lakes today, and I've heard that's the same. There's a lot of lads actually sat down in the water, but that's what happens when you have such a fantastic summer. That's when the old drop bucket can uh, really help you out. A question I get asked all the time, but I see discussed on social media, is about how long to soak um, feed pellets and micro pellets. 
some brands say you've got to soak their pellets for an X amount of time and, and that's fine, you know. I love the carbon coarse pellets that, um, that I've been using for the last two or three years. The Bait Tech ones are fantastic. But as we're seeing on more and more venues now, you've got to use their, their own fishery pellets and as you can appreciate, the quality and, and um, the, the brand of pellet that you use on some venues is different from others. Some venues you can soak the pellets for quite a long time and on others you can only soak them for 30 seconds before they start breaking down and it's too much. The best bit of advice I can give anybody is just purely what I've ended up having to do. I'm no expert when it comes to mixing these pellets because I'm not coming to these venues all the time, you know. Some of these venues I only fish once every six months or whatever, so it's, it's difficult to remember what style of pellet they are and that sort of thing. The best bit of advice I can give you is, you know, you've obviously got to go out your way to buy these pellets and I would strongly suggest just mixing them a small batch at a time. There's a couple of advantages to that. Like I say, I mean, if you're fishing a method feeder like that today, obviously that doesn't hold too many pellets and if you cast in frequently then obviously you might find yourself mixing more pellets but all I do is soak them for about a minute to start with and then just see how it goes simple as that the best thing <laughs> one little bit of advice I can give you is once you've done that put them on the top of your box or right here don't put them out of sight because if you're anything like me if they're out of sight when you put them to one side, you'll get busy and that involved in setting whatever up, that you, what else you're doing at the same time. It's quite easy to forget about them. But I'm just going to give them about a minute just to see what they're like because it won't do any harm. Just draining the water off and just give them five or ten minutes just to see how they are. If they're no good at that stage, obviously you can add a little bit more water and, and you know, soften them up even further. But obviously once you've soaked them too much, that's too far then, there's nothing you can do with them. You've got to throw them away. So that's obviously wasted a bit of your time. It's obviously annoyed you a little bit, but you've also wasted a bit of money as well because some of these fisheries, the pellets, you know, they're not cheap anyway, are they? So especially if you're gonna be using quite a lot of them. So they've been soaking for about a minute. So I'll just soak the water, sorry, drain the water off these and then just put them to one side for, for 10 minutes just to see what they're like. Another key advantage to this is obviously you're not going to be wasting them. If you're only mixing say that much at a time, you can have a little bowl of water on your side tray and just while you're fishing, especially with a method feeder because you've not got the rod on your knee, you're not trying to pick up on every little bite, you just put the rod down and wait until the fish are hooked themselves anyway. So you've got both hands free, so it's no problem just to keep soaking them in little batches like this. So that means you're not going to be wasting them as well, which is always a, you know, a bonus. And the other thing is, because you're mixing them nice and fresh, they're not going to dry out too much. You know, There's nothing worse than doing a nice big batch of pellets and saying, do you know what, they're perfect then. And then after an hour, you know, the vast majority of them, they're dried up and then you can't really soak them down properly and they're, they're never quite as good. Whereas if they're like that, they stay nice and fresh. They smell fresher for a start, but they also stay nice and, and, and sticky, you know, so they will still mold into the feeder nicely. Just a little trick that I've picked up over the years that I've been coming to these style of fisheries. had a couple of fish on that 50 meter line really surprising had a couple of liners on it but it just doesn't seem to feel quite right I've come short now I'm now to about 25 meters and I've had six skimmers now well up to probably three pounds so you probably might call them bream um, so yeah I'm just catching them on a boiler I haven't had a carp yet eight mil juice dumbbell wafter has done the damage but uh, I have had a couple on eight mil high vis boiler as well there are carp there, I've seen them crashing about, you know, if we were fishing shallow with a pellet waggler or bombing pellet where you constantly lose feeding pellets and fishing a bomb over the top, I think you'd be catching loads more carp. But um, Dad's had one early on, but I think he's had about 15 skimmers now. He's absolutely loving it, all on the method um, and boily as well. So he's really enjoying that. I think I've just got an indication now. I'm not sure if that's going to develop or not. Um, so I'm currently at 25 meters as we speak. And like I said, I've just been catching some really nice skimmers, but um, no signs of carp as of yet. 
A lot of people didn't actually realise that there are caravans here on site. Perfect for anglers that are coming here and fishing the festivals or just coming for a weekend or a holiday. This is our caravan for tonight. I've not stayed in here before. This overlooks Match Lake. As you can see, there's a knock up at the minute. The sun's come out, so it looks stunning. The water level's down, like I said. Over at the far side is Specy Lake. You can just see Dad's umbrella there in between the trees. And when I go around this corner, you'll hear the wind, no doubt. But this is Arena Lake as well. That is quite often in on a lot of the qualifiers and open matches here as well. Um, but yeah, ideally situated for caravans here. If you can hear me over the wind. There are loads of matches here. I'd fish here a lot more. I get asked a lot about it, just obviously through the videos that I've produced here. Unfortunately, it's 125 miles away from where I live, so it's a it's a, a fair old trek. Otherwise, I would fish here a lot more often. What I'll do is I'm just going to nip back into the cafe now and have a quick chat with fishery owner Phil Briscoe, where he can just kind of put you in the picture about what events are taking place this winter and a little bit of news about their winter league. Well, I've just come in from the wind. I've just been showing you the caravan and everything. Uh, it's really blowing a gale out there, but just driving down past Match Lake, the lads there are all catching Phil. I mean, you'd expect this wind to wake them up, but it's been fishing well anyway, hasn't well, it? Well, I mean, it's blowing that hard today. Um, they can hardly hold the poles, as you can <laughs> say, but they're still catching. And of course, bomb and pallet and feeder, they're still catching one a bang, you know. So. Yeah, I know there was a match last week, and I saw the match results, and I think everybody, was you fifth, was you? No, third, get third, it right, sorry. third. What third. weight was that? Uh, I just short of £150. Only good enough for third, what's that tell you? Yeah, well that was uh, all on the bomb and pallet. Um, the, the winning weights were a bit further down the lake and they caught them short on the pole. Right. Uh, but they were, they were on how to fish down there. I just fished a simple bomb and pallet match, pinging a few, and it's kept going around. I've had fish to £20, £22. Fantastic. Uh, carp, of course. Of course, yeah, yeah. As a lot of you know, I've actually been down here just on a bit of a recce for Saturday and Sunday. Just to get a bit of a feel for it, I haven't been for months, but I've seen the match results. We're over on Specy Lake, and I was just saying to Phil, I've been catching loads and loads of skimmers and bream. There's loads out there. I've deliberately fished a more carp-style approach today, and there's just that many skimmers there, it's unreal. I dread to think how many skimmers you'd get if you were actually fishing for them. Well, that's why Larford Lakes, the species, become so popular. I mean, people love bream, they do. Yeah. You know, it's not all about carp fishing and you set your stall out on that lake and 100 pound of bream's quite achievable, it's, it's quite easy to do, I mean you know that from the winter fishing, mm. how many bream are there to be caught, uh, but whilst it's still warm, you know, there's lots of carp about, you're fishing today and quite clearly they're not where they want to be, they're not, they're not on the bottom, no. they're up and you're fishing on the bottom so you've limited your yeah. attack for these fish. I'm getting indications all the time that there are fish, and fish around the feeder and I think they're around the pellets and southern they bring there, yeah. but while I'm fishing there, I up to this stage, I'm going to go back now for another two hours, but I'm just about to head back now and up to this stage I haven't caught a single carp yet, but there have been carp there all day, they're crashing about in front of me, they're obviously up in the water, what is it there now? Now the water level's down, what is it, 10 feet deep, 8 feet? Probably uh, 8 to 10 foot uh, if you, you're catching it around 30 metre mile, probably mm. 8 to 10 yeah. foot, but your margins at the moment and your short line, i.e. a top 2 and 2 on the pole, you barely got 6 foot of water, you know. Right, right. So, uh, but they're where they want to be, uh, loads and loads of carp still feeding, tomorrow for instance we've got um, an open on, uh, which is taking in the match lake, uh, one bank of the match lake, one bank of the special lake where you are on the chalet bank yep. and then we're putting the arena in. All three pools are fishing well and that's a classic qualifier. Uh, we've got classic qualifiers incidentally just about every Saturday and Sunday through to the end of April uh, and if you win your section of 10 uh, then you're through to the final, the classic final, where you'd be fishing for two or three thousand. Yeah, anybody interested in that, like I say, I'll, I'll put a link directly underneath this video to the website, and that's got it's got the match calendar on there, all the results, um, information about booking accommodation and booking matches, everything's there, it's brilliant. It's a rare feature these days to have a, a fishery that's got a, an up-to-date website. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, but, like I say, today has been one of them typical scenarios where you could quite easily go and fish there and say, 
because I haven't caught the carp, the carp aren't feeding or the carp aren't there. I know they're there because they keep crashing about in front of me and some of them are, they're only 20 meters out. So the fish are obviously there and this is the issue we've talked about loads and loads of times about feeder fishing. It's one of the issues we've got to get over, isn't it? When you're fishing feeder only matches, when it's still warm, the fish are up in the air and it's something that a lot of the top lads try and home in on. Whereas, because today if we were fishing bomb and pellet, even a pellet waggler, I know it's windy, but the fish are up in the wind. This is the thing, I mean, you know, look, you've got the, coming up next week, you've got the uh, Gizmo Championships, which you're fishing. Yep. Uh, I may well be, I may be mind up <laughs> yet. Uh, and of course, you're in the final of the Larford Feeder Champs. And so are you. And so am I, so I'm out to sort of give you a thrashing now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, it's one of them things where you're chucking a feeder out, you can't use the catapult, you can't loose feed anything other than through your feeder, right? So you're limited, you're fishing on the bottom with either a method feeder or a feeder, cage feeder. And if the fish want to be up, then you're not going to catch them carp, you know? That's it. You'll That's catch it. a few maybe, but if you get it right and the bream are having it, then you could be looking 70, 80, 100 pound of bream. Normally down here at Larford, 100 pound of bream isn't going to get you anywhere in the frame because carp make up the weights. Yeah. If the carp are having it, happy days. And that's what it's our job to do as match anglers, is to figure it out. It's one of them things saying Larford is full of carp. That lake is full of carp. Tomorrow's match is an any method match. Yep. It's an open match. You know, we'll see the weights tomorrow because I'm going to film it for you so you'll get to see that. My predictions are most of the weights will possibly come on a, on a pole. Who knows? I don't know. I haven't been coming, but that's what I expect. But the two events that I'm here to the have a bit of a record the, uh, on, the feeder. Of both feeder events. So it's all right saying they're getting 160, 180, 200 pound on the pole. If you can't fish a pole, we're feeder anglers. We've got to figure it the best way out to get a feeder weight. Yeah. And that's why we're here. So I mean, Jamie, over the last uh, four to six weeks, we've seen the record go two, three times on the Spessy Lake. We've seen the record go two or three times on the Match Lake. Have you? Um, I mean, they've been weighing, or should have been weighing, over 400 pounds of fish but the majority of them <laughs> have caught these sort of weights. We've had to knock them back. They've been overweight in the, in the keep nets. So 75 pound net limit here. It is, it's 75 pound net limit. But you know, I've had anglers on just lately that have had three or four fish and gone over the net limit. <laughs> Unreal. You know, unbelievably big fish. I mean, you know, they've been getting them to sort of 30 pound on the pole. Yeah. Um, I it's mean, I had, two, I had two fish last week uh, both of which would have probably gone £22 a piece. So two bites for £44, you know, it's just unreal. 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 A lot of skimmers there. Oh yeah, um, yeah a lot, you need a lot of skimmers for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well I'm just about to head back over there now and have the last two hours. Dad's probably still catching skimmers as we speak. Quick word from Phil though, we've obviously, I've, I've put the link below for you to the website and I've actually fished winter leagues here in the past. Phil, you've got another busy winter again with matches, haven't you? What's coming yeah, up? yeah, I mean, we've got the Winter League about to start. The Winter League starts on uh, Sunday the 28th. Is that a team Winter League? That's a team Winter League. We, we normally have about 15 teams in that. Okay. Um, so, you know, around about 60 anglers or so, which is nice pegging for the, for the venue. We can give them a bit of space and one thing and another, you know. Um, but we've got numerous Opens, um, and of course we've got Golden uh, Rod Qualifiers down here, uh, which is the national uh, feeder championships yep. that we do in the winter it was a big big success last year and let's not forget down here at Larford you were in it right what were the temperatures like worst worst I've ever fished in well I ever. mean I mean we, we had the beast from the second beast from the <laughs> east yeah. game in, uh, and you still needed 80 to 100 pounds to win yeah you did you know Charles, so, Charles Simpson reigned champ supreme on that one that was everybody knows how hardy my dad is you know both days of that competition he never got out of the van for the full days of competition. He had to have the heat on in the van, engine running for the full duration. And they still had those weights. So we know the fish are there. Um, yeah, bitterly cold conditions, <clears throat> but there's that many mouths in there. One or two are gonna open the mouths at some point. Um, and I mean, you know, the skimmer fishing, I thought was absolutely su superb in those conditions. Yeah. You know, and the, the bream are getting bigger and bigger. I mean, your average now is probably two and a half pound, three yeah, pound even. Yeah. But there's fish now coming out, four or five pound skimmers, or proper bream I should yeah. say, but millions and millions of, uh, of carp, even in the winter, are going to feed. And, you know, let's not rule out other things, you know. Um, if you want to come down for a really good uh, silverfish day down here, there's that many roach to be caught. 
Nobody ever fishes for them. No, except you. You fish for them. Well, when it's hot, when it's really hard, you know me to go on there and fish a waggler, etc. Yeah. And just spray maggots, and you can catch 20, 25 pound of roach on the hardest Brilliant. of days. Brilliant fishing. Yeah. Well, I'm eager to get back over there now. I'm going to have the last two hours, see if I can snare one or two carp and learn a little bit for, for tomorrow, but mainly for next week as well. When um, certainly I'm looking forward to the three day, that'd be brilliant. 40 anglers booked on, I believe, and I'll have the cameras here with me to film it for you. And obviously, the final at the weekend where I'll be going battle, head to head battle with this chap over here. Yeah, and, uh, I'm having the two gram now, he's not. Well, thanks for your time, Phil. Thank Any, you. Anybody interested in those matches, like I said, the link to the website is direct, directly below underneath this video. So, thanks, Phil. I'm going to go and catch some car. Absolutely. Thank you. Cheers, pal. Well, I've just got back from having a quick chat with Phil Briscoe. This is not a sponsored video in any shape or form. It's just I get asked so much about the venues that I visit. I thought it would be nice just to share some details about this one whilst I'm here. And I'm not fishing a match, so I can obviously give you some more information about it. Two hours left now. I think the tip's going. There we go. I'd say that was on, wouldn't you? That's on an 8mm juice dumbbell wafter. I'm pretty sure that's on. Let's pick up. <laughs> Feels like another bream. Let's get work today. Then I'll make you scramble days. We ain't got no plans for the day. Let's stay inside and play video games. Oh, no. Cause we bought this at this time. All work, no play. It's like we're running away. Well, what a great fish to finish on. It's five to four, so you can see with the size of these fish how you can rack up a uh, you know, weight late on in a match. Um, it's been a brilliant session, really enjoyed it. So a quick look at this fish. These are what this fishery is known for. It's a big double, big, big fish, but that's what we're fishing for. On the method again, eight mil juice dumbbell wafter. Gonna call it a day now. It looks like the rain's gonna come, but it's been a really valuable session. Fantastic fish, as you can see. Superb size. That's how you can rack up these really big weights. Brilliant fish to finish on. Let's pop him back. And hopefully, we're gonna be seeing that one and his mates tomorrow and over the matches next week. Hope we've enjoyed. This week's video. Fish like that are just so important in any match, but certainly the later stages of a match. They've just showered time over there on the match, so it's bang on four o'clock now. The light's going, it looks like it's gonna rain, but thanks for watching, really appreciate you watching this. Hope you've enjoyed just this bit of an insight into how I tackle some of the recce and practice sessions that I obviously get involved in prior to festivals and big events. Um, it's been a bit of a test, but the things that I've learned, I'm glad I've learned them today. That's why I'm here to learn. I'd much rather learn them today or you know instead of tomorrow or the festival next week or the final. I'm here to learn these things now. So I can pack my kit away now. I'm going to head up to the caravan now, wait for Martin turning up. We're going to go and get some pizza and just kind of chat about the day and plan our approach for tomorrow and what we've learned 
and just compare notes as it were. But it's been a fantastic day, caught loads of fish, Dad's absolutely loved it and um, like I say, the rain's just about held off for us. So thanks for watching. Don't forget if you like videos like this and you want to see footage from the, the festival next week and the final and you just want to kind of see how I progress through that and what the results are and how it fishes, then please hit subscribe in that bottom corner or the subscribe button or the bell button and that will keep you in the loop and notified of any future uploads. There's at least a video every week now, Thursday at six o'clock, but there's going to be some others in between as well as and when I can fit them in around my matches. So thanks for watching, really appreciate it. And please, if you like videos like this, just hit that thumbs up button below and the share button. It really does make a difference. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cause we both